Hi guys, the new V4.2 is here. We have reworked and improved texture density and advanced UV map systems and also added many other cool features. Something you have been waiting for a long time, display UVs in object mode, because now in object mode, when you're selecting objects, it's impossible to understand what is going on with UVs. So, and that's why you need to activate display in UV checker, display UV object, and now when you will be selecting objects, you will see their UVs. Let's switch channel and check it one more time. Also, when you are selecting two objects, you can see that active object is highlighted by more green color. And this is not everything, so when you are in edit mode, we added the ability to display overlapped islands. And when you click, you can immediately see the places of errors like on the UVs. And it's in live mode. And you can fix it and see that it's fixed. And also, you can show it not only in UV editor, but also in 3D view. We completely reworked advanced UV maps panel and now it works extremely good for multi-object mode. For the first object we have two channels, UV map and light map. For the second object we have UV map channel only. When we are selecting two objects, we can see that UV map channel is existing in two objects and light map for one object only. When something is not synchronized, it can be like active map, position or render, so it will be highlighted by red. We can click right here and click OK and all the channels will be synchronized and missing channels will be created. Actually, it's this button, but you can evoke it through this red indicator. Let's have a look at another situation. So we have two channels, but on the second object, UV map channel is on the second place. On the first one, on the first place. What we can see if we are selecting these two objects? We can see that active map is not the same. On the first object it's UV map, on the second it's light map. So when we are selecting two objects and we, we are clicking here, we can synchronize these selected UV channels. But we still see this red in position. So again we can click here click OK and now our UV channels will be synchronized. Another situation when for the first object we still have two UV channels and for the second object we have one UV channel but with another name. When we are selecting two objects we can see three UV channels in the list. We can see that test UV channel is not active and it means that active object doesn't have this UV channel. Also we can disable multi-object mode and we can see in the list only UV channels of the active object. Now we can see a lot of red indication, let's fix it and synchronize our maps. When we are clicking here to synchronize them by name and clicking OK, so we are receiving three UV channels per each object and it's not what we needed to have. Let's return back and click again and change mode from by name to by order. And now we can have two UV channels per each object. But the problem is that we are missing the original name of the second UV channel. Let's copy paste this name. Click rename all the maps and click find this name and replace it by the name from our template light map. And here in preview we can see what will be renamed and how. And clicking OK. And now for each object we have two UV channels with the right naming. Let's imagine that you need to rename more than one UV channel. For this aim you can use template. Here we need to use this checkbox generate template names. Here in the settings you can create this template. Here we have UV map, light map, channel, diffuse, bake. And we are clicking OK. 
And now we can see that all UV channels were named for two objects. When you are in multi-object mode and everything is synchronized, you can easily move selected channel for all the objects. For example, I want light map on the last place. Copy paste work in the same way as it was before copying islands from one channel to another channel. Copy UV, past UV. For the object mode, we added interface for transferring UV maps between objects. It uses native Blender operators. To use it, you need to select two or more objects with the same geometry. Now this panel is active and we can click transfer UV maps. Now we can see that barrels became orange. Also, we can switch the source by clicking this button. And now we have two green barrels. If you have more than two meshes selected, it's very hard to understand what will be the source. And to solve this problem, you need to clear source here and to use the sample button to choose your source mesh and transfer your maps. It was example of matching geometry mode, but also you can use other native Blender operators like to project your UVs from one object to another. Randomize got advanced mode and now I show you how to use it. Here we have 16 planes and the texture with 16 leaves. Shift U, transform, randomize and now we need to switch from simple to advanced mode. Firstly we need to change limit U, 1. And here we can see that it's randomized from minus 1 to 1 per 2 axis. We need to click one, one direction to change it from 0 to 1. And also we need to change the step 0, 25 because we have four leaves per row. And now when we are changing seeds, so all the time we are receiving different results. Also we can make it more interesting. Let's click 180 with the step 90 degrees and we can see that they will be also randomly rotated with a step 90 degrees. Also you can change scale as well as disable rotation or position. Texel density panel has been significantly improved, but in the top part everything is almost the same. Here we have texel density value, here we have units, texture size, also we can get texel density, change it to 3. But what is new, when we are setting texel density and using this button pivot point, we can choose pivot point for setting texel density. Here is in the middle, left corner, right corner. Texel density range is calculating minimum average or maximum texel density value for selected objects or all the objects in the scene. To use it, you need to click this button and now we can see that we have minimum 0, maximum 99. If we have 0, it means that we have polygons with 0 area. Clicking on this value, we can select these polygons on the model. And yes, really we have polygons with 0 area. To fix it, we need to click then unwrap, select it only. And returning back to texel density, get texel density from the nearest island and set texel density to this polygon. Calculate texel density operator is showing recommended texture size based on given texel density value. And here we have more than 5k. Let's choose the right texel density for the 4k texture. We are changing this value. And we can see that for the 4K texture, the approximate texel density will be 7.5 pixels per centimeter. Also, you can do the opposite and to set texture size, for example, 2K, to get recommended texel density. 
Display texel density has been completely reworked and now it's using overlay principle. When you activate it, you can see that all the islands will be covered by different colors according to different texel density. Also in the bottom you can see color widget that is showing the state of texel density in the scene. When you are selecting polygon or island, you can see current texel density of this island. Also, all these values from the scenes will be copied to Texel Density range. A bit more we can find different modes, Island mode and Face mode. Let's jump back to Island and let's have a look about what is balanced. Let's open this Advanced Display settings and when we have this Balance method, we have only three color scheme, we can change it if we want. But what is important, we can regulate the middle value. For example, if you, we go to, to the left side, we can see that green point move to the left. If we go to extreme right value, more than 300, we can see that the green value will be more to the right side. It's all about display options. Let's check another method that is called Spectrum. Here we have more color schemes, full spectrum, reverse spectrum, linear, mono. Let's return back to three color. And the main difference is that you can set limits for the spectrum. When you are clicking menu, for example, we want to say that we don't want to see what is below 200. 50. And we can see that everything that is below it will be shown as black. The same we can save for this value. We don't want to see everything that is more than 300 and it will be colored by white. Here you can change the opacity of colors on the model. Also don't forget that you can enable this display in UV editor. The last method is called presets and showing our presets. For now we don't have any presets. Let's add two. And now we can see that we have blue preset and red preset. And also we can have checkbox presets only to show only presets on the model. Display text density is working in life. It means that when you edit some islands, the results will be recalculated. If for some reasons you don't like overlay display, you can still use old method about baking texel density to vertex color. For a complicated models, it can be a very long time when it's recalculating display. That's why you can disable auto update and update your meshes whenever you want by using this button. Also, we improved text density presets. For example, now you can select polygons with different text density values and click create presets. And you will create presets out of this selection. Also, if you have changed the colors of presets by accident, you can change it with this colorize presets button. Also, values can be sorted from the minimum to maximum by using this button. One more improvement is when you are saving your preset, you are also saving units and texture size. For example, let's save this preset as one, clear all the values. And next time when you are loading your preset and you have different values from what we had, it will ask you load units and texture size or not. We are clicking load. And we have again meters and 1k texture. Global text density preset is used as a separate preset for some operators. Here you can change the value of this preset. And now I will show you how to use it. Let's go to then unwrap. And now when we are unwrapping selected island, we can see here text density settings. And here we have skip but we can change it to the global preset. And now each time when you will be then unwrapping some new islands, 
it will be automatically setting this preset from global texel density. Also, you can find this setting for unwrap in place and quadrify operator. New island size system helps to control island size in pixels or units proportionally or not proportionally. For example, we need to rescale these islands to another texture size, keeping the same amount of pixels per island. We need to click Get. And next time when we are changing texture size to the bigger one and click in Set, for the each island we have the same amount of pixels as we had for the previous texture size. UV world size feature will be useful for people who are working with architecture and need to match real world size with UVs. And to use it you don't need to know like the proper texture density for your textures. Everything what you need to know is texture size and real world size of what you can see on this texture. To set right texture density to the walls we need to select bricks from the list, also size 1.2 and also we can calculate this existing size and we can see that it's seven times bigger than we need and when we need this proper value we just need to select our walls and click set and the same we need to do for the roof, select roof select islands and the size is one meter set and now we can have real world size in our scene for the blender pack engine we added pack and trim option previously we had it only in uv pack master let's select these islands and pack it to the active trim main let's switch active trim select islands pack again and also pack cables to the cable trim previously when we had stacked islands it was impossible to calculate the right uv coverage we were receiving very big results because each island was calculated individually and we added the mode that is called exclude stacked and now we can calculate and receive the right value also we can calculate the value of selected islands we had excluded system for blender pack and uv pack master but in this update we also added it to uv packer pack engine to use it you need to select islands tag them as excluded and when you pack these islands and click on hide you can see that highlighted islands were not packed Core library has been updated to version 2. We have improved performance and added a cancel button for all operations. When you update, don't forget that for version ZenUV 4.2 you need to install the library version 2. For all previous versions you still need version 1. Also you can download the scene from the preview in ZenUV in examples. Ready project on Gumroad or Unreal Marketplace. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.